These guys truly are the worst of the worst. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 evil characters of all time. For this list, we're looking at the evilest characters throughout all of media, which means film, television, and video games. We'll also be including literary and comic book characters, but only if they were adapted into some form of media. These characters also don't necessarily need to be the antagonists of their respective stories. We will also be including protagonists, as long as they're morally corrupt characters. Also, a spoiler alert is now in effect. Number 20, Anton Chigurh. What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss. I don't know, I couldn't say. Cormac McCarthy, the Coen brothers, and of course, Javier Bardem, all helped create one of the greatest villains in recent years. Anton is the primary antagonist of McCarthy's No Country for Old Men and the resulting movie adaptation. And we never thought a guy with that kind of haircut could be so menacing. Like many of McCarthy's villains, Shigur is more of a walking, talking metaphor than a three-dimensional character. You mean the nature of this conversation? I mean the nature of you. And what Shigur represents is certainly up to interpretation, although many fans and scholars have debated elements of death, chance, and fate. Is he death himself? Does he represent remorseless fate? Either way, he's a stone-cold and emotionless killer, and there is nothing scarier than that. You got no cause to hurt me. No, but I gave my word. You gave your word? To your husband. Number 19, the Sheriff of Nottingham. That's it. Cancel the kitchen scraps for lepers and orphans. No more merciful beheadings. And call off Christmas. Like Shigur, the Sheriff of Nottingham serves largely as a representation, although in this case the metaphor is a bit clearer. The Sheriff is the main antagonist in the legend of Robin Hood, and as you all know, Robin Hood steals from the rich and gives to the poor. Robin Hood steals money from my pocket, forcing me to hurt the public, and they love him for it? Yes. The Sheriff is the very embodiment of said rich. He is covetous, he is selfish, and he imposes unaffordable taxes on the citizens of Nottinghamshire. He is the very personification of greed and avarice. He's also been portrayed by some true movie legends, perhaps most famously by Alan Rickman in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Do you mind, Loxley? We've just been married. <coughs> Number 18. Jigsaw. Hello, Michael. I want to play a game. It doesn't get much more depraved than the Jigsaw Killer. Unlike most movies of its ilk, the Saw franchise actually personified Jigsaw by giving him a tragic backstory and a legitimate motivation. But that doesn't make him any less sick. Of all the traditional horror movie killers, Jigsaw is easily one of the most psychotic. Not only because he forces his victims to mutilate and traumatize themselves, that is, if they even survive, but because he genuinely believes he's doing good. I'm sick from the disease eating away at me inside. Sounds like our friend Jigsaw. I'm sick of people who don't appreciate their blessings. He's not just some mindless and unstoppable killer that walks around in a mask. He's just a man with a really sick and twisted sense of righteousness. Not to mention an obscene imagination. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive. But not you. Not anymore. Number 17, Frieza. For that, I'm going to give you a little break. I, I know, I I'll fight without using my hands. Well, how does that grab you? It doesn't get much more evil than a galactic space tyrant. Frieza, one of the primary villains of the Dragon Ball universe, was responsible for enslaving and destroying entire planets, including that of our hero, Goku. When searching for the Dragon Balls on planet Namek, Frieza's kill count was pretty much unprecedented in anime, taking down the likes of Dende, Vegeta, and of course, Krillin. But I go on and on. I am lord of the universe. Nothing can stop me. 
Nothing, see? While his actions in the Tournament of Power made it seem like he could have turned over a new leaf, his attempts to once again put an end to Goku and Vegeta with the power of Broly prove he's just as much of a scumbag as always. You fool, you really believe that, don't you understand? I want not you, me, get it? Number 16, Joffrey Baratheon. Please let me go home, I won't do any treason, I swear I'll Mother just... says I'm still to marry you, so you'll stay here. And obey. Game of Thrones was filled with complex and three-dimensional characters, and even the most evil characters weren't portrayed as mustache-twirling cartoon villains. Aside from Joffrey Baratheon. Well, and Ramsay Bolton. You win the game if you can figure out who I am and why I'm torturing you, and I win the game if you beg me to cut off your finger. But Joffrey takes the cake. There are absolutely zero redeeming qualities to Joffrey, and even his selfish and conniving family thinks he's a piece of crap. Killing you would send your brother a message. <laughs> but my mother insists on keeping you alive. He's a perfect representation of a spoiled child given way too much power. He kills on a whim, and often without thinking of the consequences, treats his citizens and family like dirt, and roots his entertainment in the suffering of others. And to make matters worse, he's a total crybaby. His painful death could not come fast enough. Uh, he's choking! I'm the poor boy! Number 15, Victor Von Doom, also known as Dr. Doom. Another wonderful creation of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Dr. Doom is one of the all-time greatest comic book villains. Doom is all about holding and displaying his incredible power as the ruler of Latveria, and he often comes into conflict with the Fantastic Four. He also manages to get his hands on all the latest powers, magical abilities, and pieces of dangerous technology. This is gonna be fun! He's entirely self-serving and is not above sacrificing his first love to obtain a killer piece of mystical armor, which was derived from her skin. No big deal. Hopefully we get a decent live-action version soon, because those Fantastic Four movies are insulting to his legacy. If this world must die, so that mine may live, so be it. Number 14, Freddy Krueger. Please, God. This is God. Despite the campy sequels and his colorful personality, Freddy Krueger is undeniably one of the scariest slashers in movie history. For one thing, there's literally no escaping him. You can't run away, you can't hide, and you can't outthink him. You'll have to sleep eventually, and when you do, Freddy will be waiting. He was a monster in real life as well, as he earned the nickname Springwood Slasher due to his propensity for torturing and murdering children. His finger knives and horribly burnt face are also literally the stuff of nightmares. To make matters worse, he's also incredibly cocky and isn't above viciously taunting you before he cuts you up like a steak. He's a walking smorgasbord of scares. You die. Number 13, Ganon Ganondorf. is much like Shao Kahn. He is massive, he wields some incredible pieces of mystical magic, and he wants nothing more than to rule the world. He originally appeared in an imposing boar-like form before obtaining his signature humanoid appearance in Ocarina of Time. Still imposing, just in a different way. He also serves as the very embodiment of evil, not just because of his awesome stature, dangerous abilities, and the use of the Triforce of Power, but also because he'll use a variety of evil methods to obtain his desires, including political manipulation. Ganon is easily one of gaming's most iconic and most unstoppable villains. <laughs> Number 12, Walter White. Breaking Bad is a paragon in the art of character development. We all rooted for Walt at first, as he was a poor, underachieving, and down-on-his-luck chemistry teacher and family man. By the end of the series, Walt had turned into a conniving criminal mastermind who wasn't above poisoning children, destroying his family, selling his partner into slavery, or literally melting a child to fuel his ego and meteoric rise to power. So go ahead. If you think that I am capable of doing this, then go. Uh, uh, put a 
bullet in my head and kill me right now. He's arguably the most villainous protagonist in television history, and it made for some truly difficult viewing. I watched Jane die. I was there. And I watched her die. Gus Fring was a tough and heartless SOB, but Walt was on a whole other level. Number 11, Kefka Palazzo. The Final Fantasy video game series is host to a wide variety of villains, ranging from the evil priests, evil mercenaries, and in one case, an evil tree. Yet, after 15 installments and countless spin-offs, this maniacal jester from the sixth installment of the series remains the most evil of the lot. Here comes Kefka! Boom! Let's teach them a thing or two! Or three! To put it simply, Kefka views all life all culture, hell, all of existence is worthless, a means to fuel his desire for destruction. He'll even betray his own allies without a second thought just because he feels like it. Yet even when he manages to devastate the world and obtain godlike powers, that's still not enough for him. It's not enough. Destroy more! Have got to destroy more! Number 10, Hans Landa. Landa is arguably Quentin Tarantino's greatest villain. What are you aware of? Did they call you to join them? Precisely. Not only is he a brilliantly written character, but he's played with awe-inspiring reverence by Christoph Waltz, who went on to win like all of the awards. Landa takes pride in being wicked and feared, egotistically embodying his nickname the Jew Hunter by using manipulative tactics and a false sense of friendliness to root out the Jews. Il y avait une autre chose que je voulais vous demander. He's also a complete monster who hides behind his admittedly alluring charm. He is fiercely intelligent and is able to outsmart his enemies at every turn. Even in the end, he's able to worm his way out of trouble, well, mostly, by betraying Hitler and the Nazi party to the inglorious bastards. The smartest villains are always the scariest. Gentlemen, I have no intention of killing Hitler and killing Goebbels and killing Goering and killing Bormann, not to mention winning the war single-handedly for the Allies, only later to find myself standing before a Jewish tribunal. If you want to win the war tonight, we have to make a deal. Number 9. Hannibal Lecter While we're on the subject of intelligent villains, let's go ahead and talk about Hannibal the Cannibal Lecter. People will say we're in love. Hannibal is a highly intelligent man who once worked as a forensic psychiatrist before being imprisoned for, you know, eating people. There's something intrinsic and primal about fearing Hannibal Lecter. One look into his emotionless eyes is enough to set off some instinctual warning bells. Pity about poor Catherine, though. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's like looking into the eyes of a lion. You just know this thing is gonna overpower you and eat you for dinner without a second thought. And like Hans Landa, Hannibal often uses his intelligence to his benefit, resulting in his ever-elusive nature. I do wish we could chat longer, but I'm having an old friend for dinner. Bye. It doesn't get much scarier than Hannibal Lecter. Not when it comes to human villains, anyway. Number 8. Michael Myers Don't let the everyday name fool you. Michael Myers is not human. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale, emotionless face and the blackest eyes. Well, he is, but not really. Michael Myers also goes by The Shape or The Boogeyman, which is perhaps a more apt description. Michael is arguably the most influential slasher in movie history, as his template was used for countless villains throughout the years. All right, all right, come on, where's my beer? Well, can't you answer me? 
Slow but menacing and unrelenting, totally unkillable, completely emotionless and silent, and seemingly without a shred of humanity. Uh -oh. The first Halloween implies that nothing made Michael evil. He was simply born into it. And that is a horrifying summation of humanity. Some people are just empty and soulless, and that is not a comforting thought. Number seven, Mr. Hyde. Despite being introduced way back in 1886, Mr. Hyde is still synonymous with evil. Such is the staying power of a wonderfully written villain. As you probably all know, Edward Hyde represents the evil traits of protagonist Henry Jekyll. I Unlike his kind and moral counterpart, Mr. Hyde is completely merciless and is willing to indulge in vices and perform actions that Jekyll is not willing to do, including murder. Perhaps the story has remained so relevant due to its topicality and universality. After all, who among us hasn't had to repress sinful or perhaps even violent urges throughout our lives? Jekyll could not resist the temptation, and it completely ruined his life. Now, let that be a lesson to you. There. There he is. There's your man. Number six, Sauron. Once again, we have a villain that represents the very concept of evil itself. Sauron was never meant to be much of a character. He was always meant to serve as a representation of evil, greed, and the fallibility of man. In the land of Mordor, in the fires of Mount Doom, the Dark Lord Sauron forged in secret a master ring to control all others. And into this ring, he poured his cruelty, his malice, and his will to dominate all life. He makes a ring to rule Middle-earth, and most people caught in the ring's vicinity, especially humans, are drawn to and corrupted by its promises of unimaginable power. But even the brief glances of Sauron we do get, like his striking immensity, formidable armor, the fiery eye of Sauron, and his guttural whispers are enough to scare us senseless. Even in scenes not directly involving Sauron or the Ring, his oppressive presence and promises of destruction are felt. He is an omnipotent evil incarnate. A great eye, lidless, wreathed in flame. Yes, he is gathering all evil to him. Number five, Pennywise, It. Despite a bibliography spanning decades, Pennywise is arguably Stephen King's greatest creation. Where are you going, It? If you lived here, you'd be home by now. Come join the clown, It. You'll float down here. Well, float down here. Of course, it serves as the very personification of evil itself, as it takes on whatever form its victim is afraid of most. And it does this because, get this, it makes its victims tastier. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty depraved. And like Freddy Krueger, it has a massive ego and constantly taunts its victims with horrific visuals and cocky asides. <laughs> Want to play loogie? Oh, and let's not forget that it is actually a shapeless and eons old alien that comes from something called the Macroverse. We've got quite literally a little bit of everything here, including some Lovecraftian madness. What's not to love? Number four, Scar. If we're going by the the Lion King is just Hamlet for kids argument, which we totally should because it's true, then Scar is the cartoon equivalent of King Claudius. <laughs> Life's not fair, is it? Only he's a lot worse. Whereas Claudius showed some remorse for his actions, Scar is totally unrepentant. Long live the king. 
Not only is he conniving, he's also not above killing children to obtain complete and total control. Run away and never return. Kill him. Not only children, but his own nephew. This guy is cold. Everyone intrinsically hates Scar because we've been living with his misdeeds since childhood. He is a fantastic introduction to the elements of depravity, greed, and total selfishness. And fascism. Children have to learn about it eventually. Number three, Voldemort. We've all had bad teachers, but none quite like Dolores Umbridge. Students will raise their hands when they speak in my class. However, we're starting to realize that some of the greatest villains are really just analogs of Hitler, and that's where He Who Must Not Be Named comes in. Voldemort is Hitler's equivalent in the magic world. He unequivocally believes in blood purity, he leads a devout following of violent and prejudiced minions, and he wishes for complete and total control of the magical world. I confess myself disappointed. Unlike Hitler, he also has dark magic on his side, and people are literally afraid to say his name out of fear and traumatic memories of the first Wizarding War. You have to be a special kind of evil for people to fear your very name. A few years ago, there was one wizard that went as bad as you can go, and his name was... V his name was... V Maybe she wrote it down. No, I can't spell it. All right. Voldemort. Like Sauron, the threat of Voldemort hangs over the early novels, even when Voldemort himself is incapacitated. He is universally feared, and his evil presence is unrelenting. Number two, the Joker. The Joker is easily one of the most prolific villains in modern history. I'm a man of my word. <laughs> <laughs> Joker is an OG Batman villain, having first appeared in the debut issue of Batman in 1940. Since then, he and his psychotic ways have popped up in animation, video games, movies, TV shows, you name it. Give me one reason why I shouldn't have my boy here pull your head off. How about a magic trick? Joker is one of the most enticing villains not because he's fun and novel, although he certainly is that, but because he's cunning, manipulative, and intelligent. I wanted to see what you'd do. And you didn't disappoint. You let five people die. Then you let Dent take your place. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. This is perhaps best displayed in The Dark Knight, when the Joker constantly outsmarts and manipulates everyone and remains one step ahead of his targets. Despite displaying no superhuman characteristics, the Joker remains the most threatening and dangerous villain in comic book history. And that's saying something. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Hamburglar Honestly, who steals people's hamburgers? That's a worse offense than anything on this list. The Hamburglar is very clever and very sneaky. The Hamburglar! Nah, just kidding. Number 1. Emperor Sheev Palpatine, also known as Darth Sidious. Darth Vader certainly is an iconic villain, but he's not the evilest. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? What have you done with those plans? No, you know, seeing as how he turns good. No, that distinction belongs to Emperor Palpatine. Palpatine doesn't get a lot of screen time in the original trilogy, but he still makes one sinister impression. What is thy bidding, my master? There is a great disturbance in the Force. Most of Palpatine's characterization comes from the supplemental material and prequel trilogy, where we witness his progression from cunning and devious politician to full-blown tyrant. Are you threatening me, Master Jedi? The Senate will decide your fate. I am the Senate. He proceeded to reign over the most tyrannical and abusive regime in history, and became the very embodiment of evil within the Star Wars Skywalker saga. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Your heat has made you powerful. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.